So with the 123, it'd be kind of nice to have remote locking so you don't have to use the key all the time. And so I've fit as part of my restoration just a simple actuator to the driver's door. And this is about how I fit that and a central remote unit. Both of these are separate. This has been bought locally in Australia at a J car for about $25 and the central commanding unit for about $25 on eBay. So you actually only need the two wires, the blue and the green to control the motor. Because unlike most cars, all you need to do is actuate the driver's door, the vacuum will do the rest of the doors. So these units actually come with five wires for the master unit. Um, two of them are for the uh, positive and negative, and the other three are sort of to control the rest of the units. Now we don't need them because the vacuum is going to do that. So this has been secured to the door with two screws at the bottom. It's actually got everything you need in there. Um, this previously had one fitted, hence the holes in the door although this newer unit was slightly different length, so I've slid it down to fit. Now, this thing comes with an attachment rod, which extends up to your uh, door lock release on the coming out of the trim. And so the rod goes up, and then it's simply screwed onto the door control, you can see in the upper portion, um, <laughs> with the two Phillips, and then the little circlip um, is connecting that on. Now this will then actuate the horizontal bar being the vacuum and therefore do the rest of the doors. So this is why you actually only need a slave unit. It makes no real difference. I don't think there's any cost difference, but if you're getting really paranoid about it, I didn't really need the master actuator because the only actuating one door. Now this needs a signal to tell it to actuate, which is why you've bought the remote unit. So you can see the blue and the green wires are all we're going to need for lock and unlock. And they're going to be controlled by the remote unit you'll see in a second. So once this is all wired in, when you figured out your wiring, we just connected this up to a um, jumper kit. And thank you very much to my colleague, uh, MMWA. You can check his YouTube videos. Um, he's an absolute guru with the electrics. Quite angry that uh, unit. So this is now to get hooked up to a central remote unit. Now I don't need alarms, I don't need fancy gadgets. These things will do everything from your windows to your horns to your indicators. I just want it to lock the car. I don't want any fancy features. So you can see all the things that are tagged in on this. And if I ever lose or need to replace this, I've just taken a pick there. So we've actually just hooked this up to the old slave motor that was in the car. You can see just two wires, just as a test run. Um, to make sure that we've got the correct wires. And once again, just a jumper unit, um, those little uh, battery things you can buy nowadays. And you can see that this actuates the old unit, which is looking very sorry now. So there we go. Um, you can take my word for it, it's making a bit of a noise and it's trying to actuate there. So I've got this wired up the correct way now. Because these have so many wiring options, we don't really need all the rest of that rubbish. So um, MMWA has decided to undo that and make it a lot neater. So after pulling this all off, um, MMWA has then used a harness from another old Merck wiring harness that I've got to get a loop terminal connector to put onto the fuse block. Um, this could be tapped onto a permanent uh, source under the dash, like your clock or something to that effect, but we've decided to actually put onto the whole fuse block at uh, fuse number two, which you'll see in a second, which is a much neater way of doing it. Um, so you can see the old harness is now going onto the loop terminal, which makes it much easier to screw it on and do neatly. Now, we need to pull this wiring harness through the door. Now, this is a pain in the bum when all the grommets are on, and we've just taped it to that vacuum line and then pull it through and then done it the other way into the door and then put the grommet back on um, because trying to feed that wire through is a bit of a bugger. So now wiring up the blue and the green wire to the um, remote control unit. Um, again, a very nice, neat job here. Um, all soldered properly, heat shrunk and then double heat shrunk. And then we've just put it on with the vac line there so it doesn't get caught by the electric window. Okay. 
So the fuse block's been taken out. Now, that's been pulled through to enable just a, a screw to come off. The battery's disconnected, by the way, and the fuse is out. Now, MMWA has actually attached this to fuse number two, which is the clock and other amenities that you'll see that have permanent power. Not switchable power, but permanent power, because you need to use your remote when the car's not on. So you can see all those things that have the permanent power on number two. And this looks a lot worse than it actually is. All it was is a simple eight millimeter nut, I think it is. And then you can push the fuse block in um, to do the work. And back in place, like I said, it's just a simple nut there. The fuse for number two is not in yet. Too happy um, that no one's gonna get electrocuted. So the earth is in, um, plugged in with the rest of the MB earths near the steering column inside the car. Now the steering wheel's off, making life a tad easier, but still not particularly pleasant. So all your earths are under there, and you can now see that the remote is actually working. So this is great. Now it just needs to be tidied up. Um, we've checked the polarity, that it's going pretty easy. This is a lot less wiring than you actually think. Um, just a bit of flux for um, it's soldered and then heat shrunk together. And then uh, heat shrunk again over the top, just to keep it all tidy. Again, a really nice job um, compared to what you'd get at the car stereo shop or other business enterprise. So just securing it under the dash. Um, I hadn't got around to putting my kick panels on yet, so this is one of the last things I needed to do under there. So we are now ready to test the unit. So the wiring's all done. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this unit is the actual remotes themselves. They're big and cumbersome, but ultimately they're just about unlocking the car and I probably won't even have them attached to the key. Unlock, coming undone, lock. Just a sec. Uh, unlock. Nice. Lock. Good. You're asking a lot from a vacuum system. Lock. Unlock. 